Hi everybody, welcome to the Virtual Machine Tutorial Section 1, Part 1, Constructs. We're going to be getting set up to uh, create the virtual machine and we're going to begin building the constructs that are required to even make the thing work at all, uh, which is mostly making sure that variables function. We are going to create smart pointers, we're going to create memory maps, and we're going to create the very beginnings of the uh, various integral types that we're going to need. Uh, in part two, we're going to finish up the uh, we're going to finish up the integrals. It's going to be boring and repetitive to do the rest of the integrals, but that's what has to happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you launch Visual Studio, uh, you'll get something like this. We're going to create a new project, and it was going to be a library class or a class library in C sharp. We're doing this all in C sharp. Uh, using the .NET framework. Go ahead and click Next. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this on Drive M in Virtual Machine. And I'm going to call this GM or GSVM. Uh, I'll go ahead and use .NET 4.8. The version really doesn't matter all that much, though hopefully um, when .NET 5 comes out, we will be able to take advantage of some of the new features that um, the newer versions of C Sharp are going to have. Anyway, uh, once you have everything in here, oh, the project name. The project name of this uh, does need to be GSVM. We're going to have several projects uh, all together in here. so. I don't know why that was off. Okay, so uh, go ahead and click Create, and we will wait for that to do its thing. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to, uh, I'm going to tell you about pretty much what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're going to be creating Smart Pointers, which is a, uh, a way of um, storing both the address and the length of the place it's pointing to. In case you don't know what a pointer is, if you have a segment of memory uh, and you have a variable in that memory, you can have another variable that point that whose value is the address of the first uh, variable. And all that all that second variable is is a pointer. It just points to the other variable. Pointers are used in C and C++ very heavily. Sometimes they're used in C Sharp. Um, I don't know if you can use them in Java or not. I'm not as familiar with Java as I should be, but uh, in in more modern, the more modern the language, the less you get away from pointers. They are still there. You they're just under the surface, and you're not even aware that you're using them. However, when you're building a virtual machine, you got to use them all the time. Um, and because everything is, you know, referenced with a pointer a lot, you, we're going to have to make a way for pointers to work without using C Sharp's built-in int pointer. So uh, you'll get a you know default class one. CS. Go ahead and delete it. You don't need that. Uh, what we do need is a new folder. Add fol new folder. Uh, you do need a new folder called constructs. And inside this, we're going to create a new class. And we're going to call it smart smart pointer. Uh, 
Alrighty. Uh, now instead of making instead of having this be a uh, a class, we're going to make this a struct. So we're gonna make it public because we want to be able to access it from the outside. This is a class library after all. Okay. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to add is our um, our uh, we're not going to use fields. We're going to use uh, Sorry, uh, we're not going to use fields, we're going to use properties. So we're going to have a property called uh, address that is oop, uint address uh, that is gettable and settable, and one that is length. Now, the CPU that we're going to build when we get there is going to be 16 bit. Uh, it'll have 32 bit support for. Uh, integrals so that you can add integers up to 32 bits um, but the so the the logic and math component is going to be it's going to have a 32 bit capacity but for memory you're going to be limited to 16 bits not horrible considering you know what we're going to be doing with it which is it's a toy um, but more advanced virtual machines uh, CPUs are going to be able to have more but because of that I don't want to limit myself to 16 bits I want to have 32 bits just in case and if you for some reason you really need to you can use a U long and have the 64 bit support but we're not going to do that okay so I'm going to go ahead and say what this does. Gets the memory address of the value being pointed to. Now this is gets or sets. And this is gets or sets the length, the value. OK. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and create our uh, our constructor so public smart pointer and address and length okay Address of the value, length of the value. I like to um, comment wherever I can. Now we're going to need a, a single function in here. It's called overlap. Overlaps with an S. Um, it, we're going to be able to, we want to be able to see if these if two pointers because the, these two smart pointers. Smart, a smart pointer is essentially a range in memory. We want to see if these two smart pointers overlap. We're going to be using that when we do memory mapping. So um, we're going to check if one smart pointer overlaps another smart pointer. So we're going to want to return a bool. We're going to want to take another smart pointer as the uh, as the parameter. So we say if the address of one of the one that we have is greater than the address of our current smart pointer and the pointer address is less than the address plus the length. Okay, so if this uh, pointer we get is if its address falls within the range of our address and the end of our um, of our pointer, then we know it's inside. So return true. We can also say if the pointer dot address plus pointer dot length is greater than or equal to the address and 
the pointer dot address plus pointer dot length is less than address or less than or equal to address plus length return true. So if the uh, end of the pointer is still inside our pointer range, then we know there's an overlap. Um, so these are essentially the only two cases in which it could be true, and then otherwise we can just return false. Determines if the provided pointer collides with this pointer. Another pointer returns true if there is overlap. Otherwise, returns false. Okay. So now we have our smart pointer. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a new class that is our memory map. Um, let's see if I can figure out the best way to explain a memory map. Uh, you know what? Let's find out what Wikipedia has to say about it. Okay, a memory map is a data struct a structure of data which usually resides in memory itself that indicates how memory is laid out. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess that's um, one way to, to describe it. Uh, essentially, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating a class that uh, defines a range of smart pointers and assigns or It'll be a dictionary. I'll just put it that way. It's going to be a it's going to be a C sharp dictionary, um, where the key is a type. Uh, it's going to be generic, so the key is going to be of t, and the uh, value is going to be a memory uh, a uh, smart pointer. So it's essentially as flexible as we need it to be if we need it to hold boolean data for instance like whether or not uh, the piece of memory can be written to and you can cover the whole range of memory then there you go or later we might need to set up uh, protections so if we need to be able to say that uh, only the kernel can access this part of memory we can use integers for that um, to indicate what level of software needs to, that needs to be in order to access that part of memory, that kind of thing. Uh, this all can be executed through a memory map. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this. This is not particularly hard to uh, ex to make either. Um, so first, we're going to need it's going to be a, need to be a memory map of T because it's going to be a generic. We really don't care what T is. Uh, then we're going to need a dictionary of T and smart pointer, which is why we made the smart pointer first, and that's going to be our map. Then uh, we need to get the length of the map, not the number of instances in the map, the total length of the map itself in bytes. So that's all the smart pointers put together. So uh, we want a public uint length. And we're gonna it's going to be get only. So this is going to be our total. Max is going to be our total. Then we're going to get all the values as an array. Uh, next we're going to um, go ahead and add everything up. So we're going to use a for loop here. Ooh. Values. Ooh, where did I get value? Oh. 
that's supposed to be values, not value. Values dot length i plus plus. Okay. Now we're going to get the total size. I dot address plus values. Now, the reason we're doing it this way is that we're going to assume that we're going to assume that the uh, that the length is not necessarily from the smallest address to the biggest. Ad, no, to, to the end of the biggest address, or the big, end of the biggest um, uh, smart pointer. We're going to, we want the length of the, we want from zero to wherever the end of the map is. Um, and because this is a dictionary and they can go in any order, I'm not using a sorted dictionary for reasons. Um, we're going to have to uh, operate under the assumption that uh, it's just zero to to the max and we have to iterate through all of them and instead of adding everything together we're just going to see where the end of it is where the end of the biggest one is and that's why we're using max and, and you get the idea okay so uh, now we're going to make our constructor here Uh, we don't need any parameters for this. We're just going to, uh, in an instance, uh, make an instance for of the dictionary for map. Then we're going to add a clear function. You never know when you might need to clear it. Map dot dot clear. Okay. We're going to go ahead and um, uh, get set up so that we can start mapping uh, parameters or mapping um, values to smart pointers. So this is essentially going to be our add. Uh, so our name is here and then our smart pointer is here. I am not typing right today. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're going to check if the map contains the key, and if it does, throw a new argument exception, a range with that name already exists. Okay, then we're going to, otherwise we can just add it straight on name pointer. Okay, now we want to be able to do this without needing to have a constructed smart pointer, so we can just make a smart pointer. So what we'll do is we'll have uint address and uint length. We can go ahead and grab a copy of this because we already wrote it up and then we map uh, add new oh, t not t name sorry uh, new smart pointer address length okay uh, we will come back to this one in a bit but I'm gonna go ahead and get it set up here public void map t name I data type type now this one we'll come back to because we don't have I data type yet once we get I data type written we'll come back and do this okay so sometimes you want you once you have a value mapped you want to remap it uh, so that's what we're going to do next is we're going to add the ability to remap an existing value. So t name 
and smart pointer pointer. And if you're confused about what to do with the memory map, don't worry, we'll be using it a whole bunch. Uh, it looks like I've used it five times. I'm probably going to wind up using it more as time progresses. But anyway, um, so uh, so in order to remap, we're going to uh, first check if the map contains the key. Because if it does, good in this case. Otherwise, we need to complain. So if not map.contains key name, throw new argument exception, a mapped range with that name does not exist. And then if it does, we have map name equals pointer. Not oop, map name equals pointer. Not particularly hard. Uh, same thing with remap t name uint address uint length. Now you may be asking yourself why am I making so many um, so many different versions of the same function that do all, all do the same thing. It's just out of habit I write a lot of library code. It's good to give yourself options that way you're not stuck doing uh, making multiple calls and and it, it just it, it's just habit I do it for everything if I can anyway so um, this one is going to be pretty much the same thing. I'm going to copy the whole shebang because we're just going to replace this with a new smart pointer of address and length. Then we have a another instance where we can't uh, work on it yet because it's going to take an iData type. We will come back to that in a bit. Okay. Next, we need a, now that we have the ways of putting data in, we need a way of getting data back out. So we're going to use lookup for this. Um, so if the map contains the key name, then return map name. Else throw new key not found exception. A mapped range with that name does not exist. All right. Now we're going to use overlap. We may have instances where we want to see which, uh, if we may have a pointer and we want to see whether or not uh, that pointer falls within an encompassed, or is encompassed inside a particular set of, of uh, pointers in our memory map, which is handy to make sure whether or not you can even read or write to a piece of memory or whatever. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just, it's not hard, we're going to uh, return um, a list of t called, and we're going to call it find encompassing two s's, ranges, and we're going to take a smart pointer. Then we're going to get a list of ranges we're going to make a list of ranges. Um, we're going to get the, all the keys. Keys dot to look to array, and then we're going to iterate through the whole thing. We're going to iterate through the uh, keys and. We're going to um, overlap 
we're going to take <laughs> um how do I explain this? We're going to get one key at i. We're going to get key i, uh, and then we're going to create a um, a new smart pointer. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to iterate through all of the the keys through all of the pointers in the in the entire dictionary, and we're going to see if there's an overlap between the pointer we're given and that pointer. So we first need to uh, get the current T or the current key, sorry, which is keys I. Then we need to get the smart pointer attached to it. which we'll just call P, and we want to grab it from the map. Um, and then after that, we check if the pointer we're given overlaps with P. And if it does, ranges.add T. And then once all of that looping is done, we return ranges dot to array. Okay, I will come back and uh, write in all of the comments once we finish uh, uh, step three, and then we'll come back, do step four, and uh, we will be done for this episode. So uh, step three is we first we need to uh, create a new folder inside this one called data types and we need a new class well it's going to be an interface and like any good interface it should start with an i and we're going to call it i data type So uh, we're going to have, um, it's going to be public, obviously. Uh, we're going to have a smart pointer. An address, a length. Uh, A way to get the binary value and a way to get it from binary. So uh, what this essentially is going to do is it's just going to hold data. It's going to be a generic interface that's just designed so that later when we make our integrals it will hold data and potentially hold where that data is actually stored in memory. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and implement the, the beginning of the integrals, like I mentioned, right now. So add another class. It's going also going to be an interface and we're going to call it, we're actually making two interfaces, but we're just going to stick them in the same uh, file. Uh, if you want to separate them, you can. I'm just going to do them in the same file. Anyway, I integral is the name of the file. Oh, let's go ahead and, and write the... Um, gets a pointer to the value. Uh, then this is gets or sets an address pointing to the value. Gets or sets a length, uh, the length of the value. It's the value in binary form or sets the or 
value from binary. Okay, so that's the whole shebang. Uh, I integral. This is going to be public, obviously. Everything's public, it seems. Um, first we get, yeah, um, oh, before I get too carried away, this in, uh, inherits I data type. So uh, first we have a, gets the value. So the first we have a an object that just represents the value of the integral. Um, then we need to um, we're going to have a way to cast integrals because uh, if you have an int 16 for example uh, you don't want to just use an int 16 all the time you may need to be able to add it to an int 32 and you need a way to do that remember we're writing we're writing a virtual machine there will be no defined way to do that unless we define it ourselves. So we have to be able to cast between types. Um, and we have to be able to tell the virtual machine how to do that. So this is going to be how we do that. Uh, we can also um, do an I integral cast to I integral T out. So now we have two ways of performing a cast. Now we're going to make a second interface that's generic, essentially a generic version of what we just did. Um, so it's going to take, it's going to be public interface I integral and of type T that inherits integral and the only thing we're adding is we're going to be replacing uh, value with t. Now the only thing I cannot do, and I wish I could but I can't, is I cannot tell it that t has to be an integral type. It just, I can't. I wish I could. So we have to make sure when we write our integrals that we don't somehow screw up and give it a, f a float or something, um, or some type that it's not supposed to be. So make sure when you when you actually use this that t is an integral type. Okay, so let's go back here to memory map and we can actually start using this. Let's take the comments. Off of there. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and start with map here. Oh, yes. Uh, we need to do using gsvm dot constructs dot data types. That way it knows what I data type is. Okay, next. Uh, so we're going to attempt to map the uh, data type from the pointer. And if we get some sort of bizarre error, we're just going to throw it. And the it's pretty much the same thing here. We're going to just remap. I'm going to try to remap from the pointer. And if we get an error, we're going to throw it. OK. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, write up our comments.
Uh, the, by the way, the reason we're doing length from the reason we're doing length from zero is because generally when you do a memory map, you're mapping the entire section of memory, the entire all of all of memory. It, it would be weird to only map a segment of memory. If you're going to be doing that, why? So generally you want to map the whole thing, and um, so you'll have stuff being mapped at address zero anyway. Okay, anyway, so instantiates a new memory map. Clears the memory map. Maps a range to maps a name to a range. This is pretty much going to be the same for all of these. Maps a name to a range. Remaps a name, remaps a name, remaps a name, looks up the range represented by the name, and then finds Ranges overlapping with the provided pointer. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and. Okay, we already commented that. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, converts one type of integral to another. Uh, remember when we do this that i out is has to inherit from i integral or you can do this which type of integral oh let me double check huh okay uh, i just double checked i don't know why I have uh, get only on this side, but I have get and set on this side. I couldn't tell you. Um, I wrote this code two years ago, so there probably was a reason. I don't know what it is. Um, it might be related to how integrals are put together. We'll find out in the next episode. Either way, uh, use get and set for this uh, uh, generic version. So gets or sets the value. Okay, so that is it for this episode. We have gotten everything set up so we can actually start putting together our integrals. The integrals list is going to be massive. Um, it looks something like this. Uh, it's essentially the same thing over and over and over again. So there's going to be a lot of copying and pasting and just changing numbers. It won't take too long, but it's not going to be terribly fun. It'll be kind of boring. We'll get to the more interesting stuff once this is taken care of, because once this is taken care of, uh, we can go ahead and get started on um, on setting up the basics of the CPU and setting up memory. Um, essentially, all of the all of the core components that make up the virtual computer get to be made after integrals are done. Uh, you cannot do anything unless you can represent the data. So 
first we have to represent the data. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you for the next one. Uh, visit um, uh, the next episode will be uh, will be section one, part two of hardware. Um, not to be confused with the software side. Uh, see you later.